Hey guys, it's Ages Epic Games here, and today I'm actually going to do a mod spotlight, well, sort of mod spotlight on how to use Optifine to get the best frame rate, and how to not use Optifine, sort of. I'm basically going to be telling you, with and without Optifine, how to get the best frame rate you can possibly can, just editing the video settings. So let's just go straight into it, you press Escape and Options to get into your settings, then Video Settings, and if you've got Optifine, it should look exactly like this. However, if you haven't, these six tabs at the bottom here will not be here. As well as, I believe, this will just simply... It'll look like that. Render distance normal. It won't have any of this plus 16 and plus 48 nonsense. That's just Optifine changing that. And there may be a couple of other modifications. I'm not entirely certain. I can't remember off the top of my head. But basically, to get the best performance without Optifine, graphics are usually on fancy, you set that to fast, smooth lighting all the way at the bottom, uh, fog fast, uh, render distance, if it's really bad, set it to tiny, however, if doing so, you can see I can hardly see anything, and you can actually see through the wall that was over there. If I up my render distance again, so it does affect quite a bit what you want your render distance, distance as. Um, view bobbing, yeah I suppose that does help your frames per second a little bit but not too much. So that's optional, it depends if you like it or not. Turning clouds off helps it obviously. And the smaller the fog start the faster the frame rate. If you hover over them, they usually tell you 0.2, the fog starts near the player, in other words it's going to be nice and fast for you guys. So that's how to do it without Optifine. Now with Optifine you've got these six options here where you can change stuff in. Now the texture pack, that's that's just basic stuff really, that's the texture pack, you can't really edit that. But on animations, you can turn off everything here if you really have to. You've got the water animation, fire, redstone, flame, uh, terrain, items, smoke, explosion, portal, and lava animations. You can turn all of them off. And the particles, I usually turn the particles off anyway. I don't know why they're actually on, to be honest. That's strange. But you've got the void particles, the particles as a whole, portal, portal particles, and water particles. That basically gets rid of the full effect of everything. Let me just see if I can show you. One second. Okay, so this is the water. See if we can show you with a bit more ease. Where was I? Animations. If I turn the water and lava animations to dynamic. It looks a bit smoother, and I believe you can see through it easier for the water. However, if I just turn it off completely, nothing. It will stay completely still. So if you're in the nether, this particularly helps you a great deal. Because look, it's still got the current. I'll show you in a minute. Still pushing me. Still pushing me. It just stops the actual animation. Um, so that's basically the animation part. You can put this, usually it starts off as all for particles. You can set it to decreased or minimal. That usually helps. And rain splash, you can obviously turn that off. So you can fill around with that quite a bit. Um, details, this basically, usually most of this stuff is set as default. However, you can set it all to fast. That improves your frame rate, but you can also set it to fancy, depending on your computer. I usually just leave it as default. And the rain, you can actually turn off. The sky, you can turn off. That basically, let me go outside and just show you. If you're wondering what this map is, this is for a uh, little project that I'm doing. Yes. So, the sky... Whoops, wrong button. Where are you? You were in details, weren't you? If I turn the sky on, you can see in the background the sky up above the top turns blue. Uh, the sun and moon basically just gets rid of the sun and moon, so that, that's it's basically all up to you. 
and stars and showcases are usually on, but I don't really see the point of them. To be quite honest, I don't. I usually turn them off straight away. Now, in quality settings, you can turn all of this off. Nothing really affects gameplay or what everything looks like. Obviously, clear water. Let's just go back down to the water and see if you can see it a bit more clearer. Not particularly, because it's if it's an ocean, you can see through the water perfectly, no matter how deep it is. It's really, really good. Um, that's basically it for this. You can turn everything off in the quality section. Performance, now this is where you want to debate what you want to do. If you've got a good computer, then you can click on load far so it loads render distance to far automatically all the time. Smooth input and smooth FPS. Basically smooth input stops sticky keys. So if you're accidentally, if you hold W to go forwards and let's say it gets stuck, that won't be a huge problem. I'm not entirely certain how it stops that but it probably makes the uh, keys more sensitive, I don't know. Smooth FPS basically levels it out, stabilizes it, as it says in the little description thing that's popped up there. And preloaded chunks defines an area in which no chunks will be loaded. So that's all up to you. You can set it to 2, 4, 6, 8. That's pretty much it. I usually just have it as off. It's not that important. Chunk updates basically says how fast the world loads for you. So if you look in the description it says 1 which is the default slower world loading for higher FPS and 5 faster world loading for lowest FPS because it does 5 chunks per second per tick I believe it is and the dynamic updates is relatively pointless as well. Um, other in the other settings it will automatically save your world at 3 minutes by default so you can just change this however you want it. I usually just set it as 30 minutes because then every 3 minutes you're not going to get a sudden tiny little jolt that you notice. Um, weather is usually on. You can turn that off. If you're in single player, the weather will be off. You will not get any rain or snow ever. So that's quite good, but it will not work in multiplayer. Full screen, you can just edit the full screen what you want your resolution to be at. I usually just have mine as default wherever it's gone, there it is. The time, you can have it as day only, night only, or the normal time, which is default, so it'll cycle through normally. But that is pretty much up to fine. If you go into the controls, you'll see you've got a lot more stuff. You've got sneak drop inventory, where's the added stuff? Uh, if you do the left control, so the control button in the bottom left hand of your keyboard, you can press to zoom in further. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, this is a separate mod, ignore these, but that is basically the only extra addition to the game that alters gameplay a bit, I suppose, because you can search in for ores that are farther away if you can't quite tell what it is. Say you're all the way back here, it's really dark, you can't tell what that is. Zoom in, oh, it's iron, cool. So it can affect gameplay a bit, it's all up to you guys really, but that's basically how you can improve your frame rate to some extent using and not using Optifine. So I hope you enjoyed this little spotlight slash better frame rate type of thing. Uh, yeah, and if you're wondering, the way I've got two battle axes in my hands is through a mod called Battle Gears. I've done a mod spotlight on that as well, so check that out if you don't know about it. Anyway, I hope this has helped you guys. For those of you who cannot handle Minecraft, try this out, and maybe you'll be able to handle it. Who knows? Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this really, really fast mod spotlight type of deal, I suppose you could say. I don't know what I'm going to call this. Title should be interesting, but yeah. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps. See you guys later.